Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Pensado's Plays. He's Dave. I'm Herb. And in a second, you'll meet our multi-talented guest, Mike Dean. But first, under protest, we're going to have a little bit of a football lesson here. Um, I didn't necessarily want to do this, but the Pensado team wanted you to see what I was doing yes. up in Montreal, Canada last week. So give us a minute of your time and, and check this out. First black player to play in the Canadian Football League, a great cup champion with the Alouettes, a legend in this city. And Herb Trowick's son is standing by with John Lou. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Herb Trowick Jr. Uh, in Montreal for the first time since 2003, where your father was a legend here. When you uh, learned of the diversity of strength campaign, was there a special meaning for you, considering that your dad was the first, first African-American player to play in the CFL? Yeah, it's always been something really important because you certain people are, are tasked with certain responsibilities, and it has to be the right person at the right time. And I think the spirit of Canada made his journey easy, even though it wasn't that easy. Um, and it always was an important thing to him to make sure he represented the best of humanity as well as the best he could be as a football player. Alden Derby, pick six, Toronto. Well, Herb, uh, interview part two, uh, you were talking about how you felt uh, that your, your dad had almost a mission, uh, being a pioneer in the CFL. Uh, in the ensuing years since his retirement and what he established in the league, how much change and progress have you seen in football, in sports, uh, sporting world in general when it comes to diversity? Uh, in diversity, people now care about it. Uh, diversity isn't just in color, it's also in gender. So you see women working on the sidelines and doing other kinds of things. And I think the logo on the t-shirts, which is amazing to watch, that diversity is strength. Those people who don't pay attention to it will never be as strong as those that do. So it's great to see there's more work to be done, but ultimately it's moving in the right direction. Your dad was friends with the great Jackie Robinson in the 40s. What would your dad and Jackie Robinson say about this campaign or just how we have made progress in terms of diversity in sport and society in general? Uh, publicly, they'd be very gracious and gentlemanly. Privately, they'd say about time and thank God just to, to see it. Um, but I think because of the burden that they carried, to see it come this far, they'd both be amazed. They were amazed back then that it had come so far, even now more so. Thank you very much for this, Herb. My pleasure. Great. So, um, the, uh, while the audience applauds, you can't. That, that's really from my dad. I think. I think the takeaway of that is that diversity, well, a couple things. One is Montreal is an incredible musical city. For the 72 hours I was there, there was unbelievable music in almost every place I went. I mean, it was interesting. The football team warmed up to trap music in a way that I've just never seen a football team do it, and it's crazy. Uh, secondly, diversity counts in your musical career and your creative career as much as it counts in every in every subset of life. Um, the more you bring in other influences, the more you'll find original. Our guest uses all kinds of influences and, and all kinds of different talents. And um, I think ultimately, you know, it's a very strange thing to walk in and see your name on the back of everybody's shirt and those people honoring. So uh, I remember as a kid that that was a big deal. It was never a big deal in our house, but it's sort of cool that 61 years later, People feel that much to sort of honor somebody who broke the color barrier and there's a park in his name and so so forth. So I'm a beneficiary of his work and hopefully you're a beneficiary of, of our work moving forward. So thanks team for forcing me out of the box and making me do that. So anyways, uh, and thank you guys for indulging me. More info now. Got a cool sweepstakes coming up. It's going to be with Warm Audio, Groove 3, Even Tide and Sonar Works. Plenty for you to win. Stay close for that. Quick shout out to Kevin Beck of the Blackbird Academy. Get well soon, buddy. Uh, live classes available there in October and January. And sign up for our newsletter at pensadosplace.tv. And remember to like and subscribe and click notify. DP, what's our ITL this week? Uh, a new way to treat acoustic guitars. Check it out. Once again, I was working on this track by uh, Sonny Diamonds and sung by Jacoy. I was working on this acoustic guitar and it really turned out good, so I wanted you guys to check it out. Here's what I came up with. Okay, now let me play it for you without any of my uh, processing on it. Sorry 
about the volume difference, but you can hear the hear the, the acoustic guitar sounds a little more natural without any of this on it. But in order to fit in this type of mix, uh, where you've got other things going on, it has to compete on a, on a level that it that can't compete without too much effects on it. So I'm going to show you what I did. This track control by DMG, all it is is allows me to do some level changes and some um, panning moves. Uh, now, I started with um, with this guy. This Renaissance Axe plug-in is really a good plug-in. You can use it on percussion and it's just a game changer. But I wanted a little more emotion out of this track. And so this takes the beginning of the note and gives it a little bit of a, of a vibe that I like. So check it out. I'm gonna do a little short. If I drive you crazy, apologies. <laughs> Got it? It's subtle, but it, but like I've said a million times, mixing is a lot of little subtle things. Then we've got some EQ on it. Um, acoustic and electric guitars don't benefit by too much top end nor too much low end. Now, there's some genres where the low end helps in guitars, like say maybe a lot of heavy metal songs. But when you're in a, in a pop track, try to just find the essence of the guitar that you need to perform what, it, what you're trying to get out of it. And, and a lot of times acoustic guitars are more rhythmic instruments than they are harmonic instruments. So keep that in mind. I'll show you what I'm taking out. See, I don't need all that low end. So we're, we're dropping everything out, starting at around 200 and then up on the top end somewhere. Oh, it looks like about 5K, 4K. I could probably go a little narrower with these, but uh, this seemed to work. Now, uh, here's an EQ. Uh, you can see I'm kind of, kind of, kind of doing what I said here. Now, let, let, let's do both of them. But Dave, what about that pretty high end? Well, if it was a a singer songwriter, I would leave it, but this this song's got to compete against a lot of stuff, and I need those frequencies to be occupied by other things. Now, this one here is the star of the show. Did I say this one here? Going back to my roots, Black Box is really truly an amazing plugin. You can see it's a Plugin Alliance plugin. Um, this saturation is paralleled paralleled onto this knob here, which is the pentode tube. So. So we go left to right. The pentode gives me uh, the even harmonics that I like. You can tell I'm pumping in a lot of even harmonics. The triode has some uh, odd harmonics. I'm taking some of those out and then I'm restoring a little tiny bit of air. Check this out. It gives it almost the impression that you're in the room with it. Now, you should be asking yourself, well, Dave, you took a lot of the stuff out that you're adding back in. Yeah, I, I am doing that, but I'm adding these back in instead of with EQ, I'm adding, I'm adding them back in with harmonics. And, and so it gives me a different way that it sits in the mix. And then I wanted to get a little bit out, so I'm taking out some what frequencies I'm in, up, up on the top end. It's not really doing much. And then let me show you my effects here. I've shown you how to use these before. Let me show you something real quick. This is the Korg that, that we're feeding to. And this is the setting I'm using. Might want to copy that one. It looks it's pretty cool. So there you go. A new take on an acoustic guitar. I think it sounds new. Let me know what you think. See ya. So he's a man of many masks and a lot of different <laughs> talents. He's multi-gifted, multi-talented, yeah, and multi-award nominated and winner. A good friend of ours, the wonderful Mike Dean. Hey, man. How are you? What's up? How you guys good, doing? Man? Good, 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 good. So um, explain these these images that we see here. I don't know what the left image. I guess that's um, Jack Black. The right image is me in the studio mixing. 
Mm-hmm. Is that's, why, that's why there's a lot of highs in some of the stuff sometimes. <laughs> gotcha. You is know? it tied into your label? It helps me like get my EQ curve right. Gotcha. The ears covered. No, it's a it's a it's a new audio tool that a lot of people don't yeah. know. It's a put the yeah. mask on. No, I was working with this German group, Genetic, and they were masks. Like they're they're an anonymous group, so uh-huh. I pulled up my mask in solidarity. Look, there's my <laughs> chips. Look. Oh, there you go. It's a nice Absolutely. picture. <laughs> so the the thing about it's funny when you when you research you one of the things that I've not seen in any of the other guests we've researched is pointing out the fact that one of the instruments you play is a bassoon. Yeah. When, when's the last time you used a bassoon in a contemporary oh, record? <laughs> never, never, never. Never. Okay, cool. I just Kanye wanted, wanted me to once and I never did it. Uh, the I other thing that, that we've talked about is some of the technical ways you approach things. Dave, you had some some thoughts about that. Yeah, you're doing. You're wearing so many hats. I was wondering, how did you come to be, do your own mastering? Did it evolve over time, or is it a dissatisfaction with the way you were being mastered? Because you're mastering everything that's out there. I mean, like the first stuff I did with the Ghetto Boys and Scarface back that long ago. Yeah, I was mastered by John Moran, <coughs> uh-huh. who owned the studio that I worked at. Okay, I just watched him and learned how to master. You know, I used to master on the. The Sony 1630s. Yeah, I remember like those. Two machines and a controller. Thing. You set your offset, you know, one mm-hmm. song on each tape, and you put mm-hmm. it to a third tape. Uh, uh, sicko mode, that's the loudest thing out there. How did you master it? I mean, did you... I master as I mix, you know? I'm mm-hmm. Like, I mix for a while, then I put a mix bus on, I'll mix you, through that for a while. You mix sicko mode? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just like to push stuff as loud as I can before I hear too much distortion. Yeah. So you're you're doing it along the way, so it yeah. stays exactly where you need it to be. Yeah. Once just, you're done, are you done at that point in time, or then do you go back? And, then we go back and do them all as a group too. Gotcha. Like I don't print through that. It's mm-hmm. just like a reference that I listen through. Mm-hmm. What are the tools that you're using to get it louder than normal? Uh, a limiter, or are yeah. you still summing through the Neve? Yeah, summing through the Neve. Okay. EQ compressor limiter. Oh, okay. You know. Are you using more outboard gear at the mastering time than plugins? Or it's all plugins. All plugins. Are, are you all plugins all yeah. the time? Yeah. You're not using any outboard gear other than the Not Sony? for mastering. I mean, just the Neve. I use a mixed stream. A mixed stream is my second summing bus. Oh, you're using two still? Yeah. Okay. Which what's cool. what's the purpose of that? To have more? They just have different tones. You know, I like some things I like to run through the mixed stream, some things to the Neve. It all goes through the Neve at the end anyway. It's like a cascade. There's such a controversy about summing, not summing. Yeah. What do you feel you get from summing that, that I don't get from not summing? Good, good mixes. No. Oh, whoa. Whoa. The no, no. Dean's place, right? <laughs> no, I'm fucking with you. Um, no, just get it to kind of a glue. It makes, makes it a little easier. Okay. You know, takes away, I seem to get a little more Headroom too somehow. Yeah. Like I can push stuff a little louder than, than I can in the box. And and as it approaches a higher level, the the, the distortion is more pleasing. Is that yeah. also too? Yeah. And, and do you do anything special to get it on Spotify or make it fit or special to no. get it on Tidal? I just have a limiter I'll put on for Apple, for Master for iTunes. Okay. Just pull it back a little bit. Okay. And um, like a. My sister Raphael is dying to know this question, so be sure and exaggerate it. Um, you're the master of EQing and putting effects on ad libs. All your ad libs tucked behind the lead singer just sound amazing, and so that that can't be deverb, can it? Say no. Uh, no. Just okay, good. No, it's a lot that, of stuff, you know. Tell me, it's tell different me. all the time. I've been using the Slate reverb a lot lately. Oh, okay. The, um, I like the Bahalas. Yeah, they make great yeah. stuff. Are you putting any delays, or is it just a reverb, like, like say, on the Travis Scott song? Sometimes there's a delay before or after, you know. It's different on every every effect, just about. It's pretty Do you detailed. remember what you did on Narcos for the Amigos? That, that has some real good ones on it, too. It's the same thing? Yeah, same shit. It's not rocket science. It's just, <laughs> put a widener on there, you know. Oh, you, 
to uh, make it sit out, and, you yeah, know, make it jump out a little bit. Yeah, I noticed that. And panning, you like to pan yeah. too. Here again, Raphael was talk. We were talking about how you use panning as almost a hook, and it becomes part of the song. It's not just panning to be panning. How do you? What's your thought process when you're doing that? Just putting everything on the stage, you know, sound stage. Yeah, I was giving, gonna ask, giving everything a place, you know. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask because one of the things that you have consistently done throughout your career is also incorporated being out on the road, the live kind of side of the music you work on or the artists that you support. Does mm -hmm. that inform your mixing? What yeah, you it all ties together. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What kind of things do you get out of being on stage live? Is it audience reaction, sound? Yeah, and sometimes I'll play stuff over songs after they're out and be like, oh, I should, I should do something like that on the next album mm -hmm. or, you know. So it's a, it's a fertile place for ideas yeah. and it's almost like a test factory. And like, you can really check your low end like that, mm -hmm. you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And do you just like being on stage and playing live? Yeah, yeah. it's fun. Huh? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. It wasn't a lot of pressure when you were the only guy with Kanye back in a couple of years ago. Like It was you and Kanye for the whole tour. Yeah, it's been like that for like four years. That's, That's pressure, man. Yeah. Absolutely. As long as I don't drink, I'm good, you know. Uh -huh. No. <laughs> I smoke, just smoke weed on stage all night. It keeps me chilled out. Well, the, actually, you know, one of the famous Pensado's Play stories was your first visit. <laughs> I know where you're you, going with this. You were going to Coachella <laughs> right afterwards. And so we were all sat kind of in a row back then. Yeah. And we were doing the show live. And every time I looked at you to ask a question or something, there was smoke around your head. But I couldn't see. So in my head, oh, I was hitting the G fan. Yeah. yeah, and I said, "Mike, Mike's on fire," <laughs> and but he's not reacting to the pain, and we're live. So until he screams, I'm just gonna keep rolling. And you, and you had a little pin in your hand, so every time I turn to Dave, you take a hit, and then by the time I turn around, you blow it out. I was like, man, this guy's pain tolerance level I is remember. amazing. I didn't know you were weed friendly. <laughs> so we were. Uh, we were, and then the comments back after that episode were even funny. Oh, this dude's baked. This guy's cool. So um, <laughs> you set the precedent for us. We were ahead of the legalization thing because of you. We we appreciate that, and it's good yes. to know that we're continuing on down that path. In terms, shout of out to G Pen. That, I'm, I'm a consultant for them. Now, oh, there so. you go. There's endorsement, <laughs> and they should send us a few for now. Yeah, we can definitely get you a bag of shit. All right, cool. We'll, we'll work that out. Bag of merch, bag of G Pens. <laughs> Maybe, so, maybe something to put in. Yeah, is that where I'm going wrong? I'm going for the UAD endorsement, and you're going for no, the no, no, you're going for the G pen yeah, endorsement. So Nobody buys them like this. Yeah, that, no, know, I'm just kidding. We'll work. We'll work out that. Okay. Uh, when you did sound design for Madonna Live, what kind of stuff was that? It was for her Rebel. Tour, what it was for a tour? Rebel right? Heart. Yeah. Yeah. So, what kind of sound design did you do? I mean, I helped take old songs, put new drums over them, mm -hmm. a lot of trap drums over shit. Mm -hmm. Contemporize yeah. what she's doing. And help, like, get her vocal sound, like, EQ'd her vocal, got everything sounding right. Mm -hmm. In her ears, you know, where she liked it. Mm -hmm. You know, it was fun. When did the relationship with Travis Scott, when did that start? Because you've been, you you and him have been together. It started like 2010, 11, I guess. Mm -hmm. And he used to hit me up on Twitter all the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, he was always hitting Anthony Kilhoffer, mm -hmm. another mixer. Okay, I haven't producer. talked to him for a while. Yeah. That's good, good too. Yeah, he, Anthony's the one that finally you know, brought him out. And when when <laughs> you had that big eraser board uh, on your Instagram, you know, and, you, and you just started erasing it, yeah. man, I, I, I got nervous. It's yeah, like, I got the boards from the last two albums. I should have kept that one. I don't know why I erased it. But. Yeah, that's pretty good. Cool. Tell, tell, tell them the process. I was telling my guys, that, that was kind of an executive producer concept of what you did there. Were you were you acting kind of an executive producer, policing yeah, what's done? I'm co executive producer on it. Oh, okay. Me and Travis okay. executive produced it. Okay. Yeah, you just keep track of everything. It's kind of AR uh -huh. involved too. Mm -hmm. Sycamore the AR guy helps me do the board. So from start to finish, yeah. how long did it take to do that record? Oh, two years. What, what, song, what song are you most proud of on the record? Oh, man. I always stop trying, stop trying to be gone. What I is like it about ending. you like? The ending, I played all the music on the end. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's cool. Mm -hmm. We all recorded Stevie Wonder. 
That was cool. Mm. Mm. Yeah. When you compose, what do you do? You compose on piano? You compose on bass? Is it different things? Depends on how it hits you. Yeah, it just depends. Mm. Mm. Like from the roads and world. Just remember, I used to always have those. Yeah, I do. Still got this stuff in my studio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that song was just James Blake's vocals, and I just played under it. Mm. You know. Mm. Is there any one thing that you like more than another? Or do you like it all? Because like, you mix and you produce and you compose and you play and you... Is it just all of it? Or yeah, is it all one of thing it, really. That, yeah. yeah. Okay, Mike. This has been a requested question, okay? What's the difference between making records and mixing and mastering when you're high as fuck and when you're straight? I really don't know. <laughs> You've never been straight. <laughs> Couldn't tell you, Dave. Well, see, one of the you you didn't you didn't get the predicate of the question correct because in order to get that correct, you uh, have to check what condition he's in now yeah. before he answers. So, yeah. right, it could be different if he's. I'm well, just in normal condition. Yeah, yeah I got you. Yeah. So, so. I mean, um, you know, like everybody else, I experimented in college a little bit. Yeah, and. Um, and uh, when I'd see the when I see film or something of the, the next day, I was just god awful. But when it, and when I was in the middle of it, I thought I was changing music as we know it. So I've stayed pretty straight edge since then. But you don't, you, you you must get some kind of benefit, or you wouldn't do it. I don't know. Does it focus you or? Yeah, it helps no, I'm me being serious. focus, not um, not be bothered by shit that usually bothers me mm -hmm. or bothers people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like people have lots of changes. People are real picky, so mm -hmm. you know, being stone makes it a lot easier <laughs> <laughs> to put up with them. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So now you're, you know, when you do that many things, it's sort of hard not to be involved in a whole lot of places of the artists you work with, life and record and so on and so forth. Now you have created your own label, right? You're signing yeah. things and doing the business of. Tell us about it. Tell us about the name and the origination of the name. And it's MWA, right? MWA, yeah. Yeah. Mexican Wrestling Association. Mm -hmm. Which I love. It's just like a joke, really. Mm -hmm. it turned into something. Mm -hmm. He's got a tattoo. Apex got a tattoo of it. My producer over there. There you go. All mm -hmm. right. Cool. You guys can't see that, but there a whole bunch of people just did this and they've got MWA. Yeah, all, all the engineers. There's a whole Jess got one. one there. Sean oh. got one. Tom got one. Big Gezin back there got one. Um, and we're getting ours after the show. So if I you got guys one. Oh, Dave. Dave oh, shit, you got it. Yeah, Dave has one. <laughs> <laughs> now blood poisoning will hit Dave, and when he falls over, you'll know who, you'll know why. So what? You, who have you signed? Are you in the middle of... Um... Uh, Dice Soho's first artist I signed. Mm -hmm. I haven't signed anybody since that. Mm -hmm. Just him, and I've got Apex, you know, Simon's producer. Cool. And this new kid, Maddox, is 14-year-old. Mm. He's signed to me now. How are you finding folks? Are the people bringing stuff to you? Finding on the internet? It's on the internet. Know? Yeah. Apex. How do I find it on the internet? Twitter. Twitter, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're, 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 you're so in the middle of everything, and, and you always have been since I've known you. Does that give you the ability to forecast where you think we'll be in five years? What do you think music will sound? What do you think hip hop will sound like in five years? Do you think we'll be out of the 150, 75 mode? Do you think we'll be, because I'm noticing there's a few things sneaking in. I don't know. You never know. It's just, we'll probably be where we were in the 90s. Oh, okay. In like five years. It's dangerous to predict, right? You just kind of have to go you know, with uh, it. Yeah. Right? It's probably whatever we know it's I'm, whatever I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a prediction. Yeah. Wherever Mike is going is where hip hop is going. Hopefully. We'll did keep, you ever keep did, pushing uh, it? You're not from Florida, never mind. Did you ever notice that, that when Two Live Crew was, was hot in the 90s, we thought they were so fast and now they sound insufferably slow? I don't know why I asked that question. Just, you can skip that one. So it's double time. Yeah. Real time. Everything we do is half time, kind of. Yeah, that's true. So it feels, you know, 140 feels like 70. So in, in your world, in terms of records, are you, do you entrust your mixes to other people? Are they inside your camp, outside your camp, or is it just you're the final arbiter of, of like, all that? Jess Jackson works with me a lot, mixing. Mm -hmm. um, especially well, since the last the five Kanye albums. Mm -hmm. I needed help just to get all that product done that fast. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. We did like 39 songs in 37 days. Oh, Jesus. Damn. Damn. Lord have mercy. Did you go to Wyoming for the, all of that? Yeah. You were the only engineer there, weren't you? No, no. I was oh. out of town. What was that all about? Just getting away and recording. How long did you guys record? How long did you stay there? Yeah, for like five weeks, that trip. Was yeah, that Jackson we, Hole? Is that where you guys were? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's nice. Uh, I hear it's great. And then did you go back for the party? Yeah, I was. <laughs> I was Santa Clarita. Story. The it, party was on hold because I was still mastering the album. <laughs> oh, really? They wanted to play the music at sundown, and I was still mastering the album at that time. Oh, Jesus. And well, it was, was an party. hour away from where I was, and Connie wanted me to play the music, so I, they waited for me. So the party was held up for you to get there. Did you just come barreling through? Yeah. And <laughs> Came through with my iPhone with 10% battery on it. And <laughs> Hit it, play it fast. Yeah, it's like, come on. And they wanted to play it again. Oh, my phone made it through. It might have been 15%. You know. Gotcha. So, so now, now Apple owes you an endorsement. <laughs> For sure. Really? That's crazy. One last technical question. Um, your vocals always just stand out, especially your rap vocals. What are you doing special? Is there a compressor that you use or a type of compression that you use or parallel compression that you use? I still use that old Avid um, 660. The oh, Fairchild. the one, that, the Fairchild one? Yeah. The, without the Fairchild? <laughs> yeah. Is that, <clears throat> still use, um, yeah, I started using parallel compression recently. It's kind of cool. Just use the same compressor on that too. Oh, okay. And this... When I think the vocals are right, mm-hmm. I usually turn them up about three or four dB. Okay. So once you get it to where you think it's right, then up three or four dB, and then you're at yeah. a spot. That's gotcha. cool. Gotcha. Dean's rules. I you know. Just, it's it's as simple rules. as turning it louder. That's a, that's a headline. Um, but your vocals sound great. Everything thanks. you do sounds great. Appreciate it. I'm just trying to not act like a fanboy and ask for all this information at one time because... I will sound like Mike Dean on my next mix, you know that. Where is it that you think that you, you've you changed techniques or learned something new that you applied differently than a couple of years ago? Where is your growth? Do you notice any particular place? Learning about LUFS, I think. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I never looked at that before. That, that changed my life, too. I always used VU. You it was a you? nightmare first when I first started doing it. Yeah, Jess Jackson got me. He talked about it for about a year. Finally, I did. And he said, okay, now I'm going to give it a shot. Now there's a balance between that and VU. If you can find that balance, mm-hmm. you're good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I sometimes feel like creativity with limitations is not creativity. It's It's... I think think some of those things restrictive. Why can't I be loud and distorted if I want to, you know? Yeah. It's um, it's sad, Herb. Truly sad. I don't (laughs) notice the emotion around the table. Uh, I know, I know. I'm trying to get it. I'm trying to to toss to you to save me on this one. (laughs) I'm I'm catching (laughs) you. Okay. It's about to drive me to smoke. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think we have a lighter, too, in case. Uh, and then we have part two of Mike's. Mike is on fire, so this you know, we might have got to keep the thing encourage going. Encourage him. This might be the first batter's box I win. Oh, I got you. Okay. Um, <laughs> the, uh, absolutely. Um, this you. should help answer this question. Oh, you don't hold it down. We got it now. Any musical heroes for you that you that you admire? Like that, Herbie Hancock. Like, like, mostly old keyboard players like Chick Corea. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that's kind of what I was alluding to in the earlier thing about diversity. Like you, you borrow, you admire something, and you learn something from it, and you can apply it in ways yeah. that you and you know we're always encouraging people to not sit inside. You know, you can be inside the box in terms of what you do in terms of technical stuff, but you should be outside the box in terms of what you're listening to and what you learn from. You should stay. You know, do you agree with this? I think you should stay curious. Yeah, yeah. you should yeah. always. If you don't learn something every session, you're kind of failing. Yeah. The sm- smoke's back, Herb. And you're stuck. 
Yeah, some smoke spot. But you don't put it out. It's out for smoke spot. Mike <laughs> Dean's on fire. <laughs> Mike Dean's on fire. And that, that, that should be your next album, Mike <laughs> Dean's on fire. Or should just hold it down here. No, you should just. You know what? what you, you know, like, um, like this. One of the things that that, that I sometimes uh, wish was different was so many people know you as a hip hop person, but you're so much more than that. Like, like I didn't know you were as classical as you were early on, and, and uh, yeah. your skill sets impressive. Impressive, and people just Thank see the you. tip of the iceberg. Does that ever frustrate you? Do you ever like have a tendency to want to whip out a classical piece on an on a Migos song or something? Not really. Yeah, see. Yeah, keep it for myself. <laughs> yeah. That's a good thing. Huh? I think about doing some instrumental albums sometime soon. That'd be great. Oh, that's, that's a great, be cool, yeah. that's a great mm -hmm. idea. You got tons of music I've written for movies and stuff. Mm -hmm. I could just pull like, hours worth of shit from that. And, Call it an album. Do people ever approach you to do stuff for movies, TV, other kinds of things? Yeah, I'm usually so busy doing... Doing art. Yeah, I do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. do much of it. Is gotcha. that something you want to do, movies? Yeah, I like to do scoring. Mm -hmm. Scoring is cool. Yeah, yeah, I would imagine you It's tedious, scoring. though. It is tedious work. Unless you, know, you got a director you can work with that wouldn't be so picky, that likes what you do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Instead of trying to do what they want, they just want you to do what you do. Mm -hmm. you know? And it's, it's such a committee process. Yeah. A lot of people on your back. And or the movie with Michael Mann. Mm -hmm. He's like the Kanye West of movies mm -hmm. as far as being picky and mm -hmm. having a process. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about Kanye. What, um, arguably one of the uh, most gifted people we've, we've had in music. Um, have we seen the best of Kanye? Do, you, do we still have a lot left in him? Oh, yeah. He's, he's just barely 40 years old. He's, mm -hmm. I mean, is I'm, I'm is so, the burn there? Is the passion there? Yeah, definitely. Why is everybody looking at me? Because it's, you're funny. It's funny to watch you have a contact, huh? Oh, oh. <laughs> and, Here, and, let me passion. try the wine real quick. No way. No. Go ahead. No, I can't do it. Mike. No, man. It's against his brand. <laughs> 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 I'm, yeah. I'm good. I moved on from the Gateway Dread. Has anybody got a hypo in the audience? Hypo, that's the short day. <laughs> hypo. Speaking of hypos, I had to, I had to get um, IVs for a few times after those last five albums. Really? Yeah, it really got me running Dehydrated out. and just... Yeah. Uh, people don't really understand that. Because you should take a break every once in a while and walk around and drink some water when you're mixing. That, it was interesting you said that because that happened to me after our last award show. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, two hours after that, I literally. Yeah, if you just do I too much for up. too long. Yep. I, I couldn't even. I couldn't even move. And I, I was had like three like, months. It was just every day. Mm -hmm. like, it's too know. much. Yeah. Too much. Absolutely. And I, I think that that also leads to then another interesting point, which is an unhealthy creative person. Creativity is going to get screwed up at some point in time because your health starts to dominate it. Like yeah. it's, it's important to find that. Well, plus, artists come in and half of them are sick all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. from, you get sick. And yeah, then, then they come and sit in your face like this all day, all day, and then you <laughs> catch whatever cold they have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The next guy comes, he's got something from like Indonesia or something. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You catch yeah. different bugs all the yeah. time. And the next thing, you're, you're patient zero because yeah. it started, started with you. Um, I think the same thing is true of ear health, too. Yeah. Like you, if you burn out these, you're, you're screwed, correct? Yeah, I've, got, I've got so many, correct. I've got so many friends because of the proliferation of headphones now. I've got so many friends that have blown an eardrum out and, and lost hearing in, in an ear because of playing headphones too loud. Yeah, really, you, you remember my old friend uh, Todd, right? Yeah. Yeah, Todd had that happen to him. A lot of, a lot of friends have, have had I'm seeing that with people who now use inner ears. They're just not, they don't, because... Yeah, I've had an eardrum break before, this one. Wow. Blood came down. No joke, wow. I was on stage, and just, we, were, we were playing Touch the Sky, and kind of went, sky high, real loud. And your ear went... And I went, and I hit this note on the guitar, and... And all the overtones just went. Wow. Oh, shit. But it's healed now, though, right? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually watching the throne with one ear. Mm. I hear it was like, it was like a blown speaker when the bass plays. It's <laughs> 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 weird as shit. You're the vibration. You're like, you just my tweeter's in. messed up. Is, you're plugging there is that the beginning of wow. the distorted 808 sound you, 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 you uh, pioneered? No. That was. 
I was doing that a long time ago. People used to think it was just too weird. Mm-hmm. What, distorted 808s? Yeah, like 2001, 2000, 98. Seems like I remember coming I was making like, You make them like three bits or something. They go... Mm. Yeah, three bits, that's too, that's too low. Pretty cool. <laughs> there's no noise. There's no, there's no <laughs> note there. The... Um, <laughs> Like a lot of other folks we know who are really good at what they do, they're developing their own camps. Is there a certain criteria that you have for people that are around you in your camp, interns, engineers, or disciplines that be quiet? Is it is it free expression? Yeah, What's the Mike be, Dean way? Just have to be good. You know? mm-hmm. Not too much criteria. What's my criteria, you guys? So all of them are doing this because they all have tattoos. This is no. messy wrestling. No, we don't shoot up. We're not. <laughs> they all do heroin. Uh, they all do heroin. Uh, <laughs> they're, cool. they're laughing a little too loud, so they're putting it on for Mike. That's what they have to oh, do. Oh, I see. Yeah, I caught that. Yeah, just the kisses behind. Yeah, and then, yeah, I got yeah, you. They I got you. a little yeah, too much. Days. That works. Uh, on the Carter's record, what, what kind of stuff did you do? Was it producing and composing? Was it more drum stuff? Drum stuff? Yeah. Got you. Got you. Was that... Satisfying one person, they let you do your thing. Is it just how Jay and Bay felt? And- it's right. Just send in a bunch of stuff, and they picked what they wanted to use. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't really that involved in the final process of that one. Okay, just gotcha. in production. So you did a variety of things. Send yeah. In the name. Got it. Got it. Well, got it. Cherry pick what they you, like. When you say you sent them drums, you sent them drum tracks, just tracks of just drums. Yeah, like kick snare. Uh, you know. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then who played the keyboards on it? I don't know. Wasn't his thing to worry about. Yeah. It's like, I just. I didn't know you could do that. Actually, let me I might have a chance. Well, I've done a version. Let me call Jay Z. I've done a version of it. Like, they sent me the acapella oh, I years see. ago. Oh, okay. And I did a version, and I guess there were parts that they liked from that, and they pulled it, put it in there. Hmm. That's not normal, though, for you, is it? Just drums? Sometimes, yeah. yeah okay. There is no normal. It's yeah, whatever, it's whatever the song normal. needs, I'll just try to do. Mm hmm. I guess somebody to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. Does that make you have different sort of business practices? If somebody says do this, this will cost that. If somebody says do that, this will yeah, cost. It's, it yeah. just it's intuitive. It's a price yeah, yeah. <laughs> just uh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. There's different. I kind of made up the additional production credit. I think mm-hmm. all that existed before me. Mm-hmm. How long did you take piano lessons for? Oh, like 14 years. How how would how would your work be different had you not had those lessons? I don't know. Probably be way different. It probably wouldn't be worth a shit. So, mm. so you advocate that? Yeah, because they taught me, you know, I learned music theory and all that, and, mm. which is translates to frequencies and mixing and. I got you. And a, and a sharper ear, too, yeah, right? Yeah, like, like you're talking about just doing drums. Sometimes on songs, I'll just, they'll just give me to do like a kick in 808 because mm-hmm. I know how to make them mm-hmm. sit right. You mm-hmm. know, musically, I know how to make them all in tune. You know. mm-hmm. That's cool. Yeah. So the same thing about education, that's something that you would say is a, an important thing? Yeah. We didn't go to a school. <laughs> I didn't go to school. <laughs> Yeah, but we but got that, an education. Well, I had I scholarships, think, and I didn't go. But I think that also brings up a point about education. That's cool. That there's different kinds. There's people that go in and get a lot of theory, and some that works for some not. Then there's sort of learning the real stuff and getting right to the cheat codes and actually learning it on the spot, yeah. which is what you guys did, and that teaches you a different way. I learned that. I need more theory when I got out of high school than probably the professors did. It's so. a... Mm-hmm. I probably knew more in fifth grade than they did. Mm-hmm. Like, Just out of your own curiosity? From and, my piano teacher. It was part of the piano curriculum. Mm, mm. was learning all that. Mm-hmm. Didn't you go back and, and, and like reward her? Or just, or I used to go visit her. We'd just go play. Oh, uh-huh. yeah. that's cool that you she kept up cool. with her. Is she proud of you? I guess she is. Yeah, I mean, she died like 20 years ago. But Oh, back when we were at Enterprise? Yeah. Because uh, I remember some stories about that. I forgot what I did. did something. I went and played like a... Recital or something. Mm-hmm. And played a Chopin piece or some shit. Mm-hmm. God, Could you play a Chopin piece right now if I brought out a piano? Yeah. Bring the piano out, boys. It's a it's a no piano. it's a Bosendorfer. That's pretty you know, impressive. You know, yeah, I need no, those extra eight keys. I need to <laughs> get that an ultra low C. 
<laughs> I, I wanted to see how you pulled that Bosendorfer off. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. It's like, okay, here we go. Test the I was at my limit just saying the word. Much uh, they just pulled me off the keyboards in the showroom. Oh, yeah, so that's right. We're here. To we come in here and shit. We go around and shoot it live. I found live. I liked the name. It's pretty cool. Yeah, we could just shoot it live. All right, so let's check out your arm, batter's box, and, and how that goes. Mike is good at that, and this is going to be a enhanced batter's box. We're going to call it a virtual yeah, batter's box. I don't box. want to say it because I want to tip my hand, but earlier I, I had to be a little, a little less baked than he is so I could ask the questions and possibly win one of these damn things it's actually, after me, six years. I, how do you win, though? I don't know. That's part of the problem. There's Mike. no winning. <laughs> it's just like you're pitching. <laughs> Question and answer. We want to help your pitching a little bit. So. Okay. Okay, you ready? This is what yeah. great this is what great pitchers do. Okay. Breathe in. I'm, I'm turning into Cheech and Chong as I breathe as I in speak. very deep. Very good. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. This should be really interesting. Everybody in the back, watch out. You might get hit with a ball. Okay. Moog. Bass. Or Moog. Snares. Loud. Eight oh eights. Hmm. Bass again. Reverb. Long. Delays. Fuck. Flangers. <laughs> <laughs> no, delays. Um, on tempo. Okay. Flangers. Regeneration. He's good, Herb. He's good, Herb. Phase. Phasers. In the roads. Oh, he's good, Herb. Or Bee Gees. Or <laughs> Urban Cowboy. Uh oh. Or On Stun. Uh, panning. Extreme. Dirty South, Scarface. Pioneer. Side chaining. Cool. <laughs> The next time you light up and you dropped your um, your cigarette lighter, what would you? What one piece of gear would you rescue from your burning studio? <laughs> no hard drive. <laughs> your Jeep in. No hard drive. <laughs> Give me another, another option besides a piece of piece of like musical gear. What? What did you know? One hundred six. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Pretty you know, good. You so can buy new everything else. This is the first induced batter's box ever. You actually pitched better. So I think every week we should make sure no, no matter who's here, <laughs> you are just roasted because <laughs> you do so much better. So can we make sure we have Boone's Farm and some OG you know, no, I mean, I spoke around CB Wonder and he swore he could see, so. <laughs> Damn, you know how saying? can I follow that? Sean was there. He's like, oh, I can see. Like, well, I <laughs> no, when, when you party with Stevie, he makes... Jokes about it. I, I worked with Stevie. <laughs> he, he would take all the women's in the women's in the room and just empty their purses out. Think that remember was Bob thing. Argoloff used to be one of my mentors. You and him. Yeah. He'd pop more room like more four hundred hertz on the clavinet. Yeah. Give me the Stevie Wonder sound. So what were you gonna say? I have no clue. I'm baked. <laughs> <laughs> that's, not baked. That's, that's, what, that's why I, I set it up. Oh, I stuff. remember. I was gonna say back when I did do drugs. Um, <laughs> I uh, I pride myself in being an Oscar Wilde level smartass when I'm straight. Yeah. And and when I do drugs, I I get like peace and love and harmony and all that. And, and I, uh, I I'm I'm probably a better person for it. But I enjoy being a smartass. Remember when I used to crawl around the Enterprise? <laughs> I, so I remember when you used to crawl around. And the point of that story? I like crawl around the studio. Like, <laughs> Hey, man, I got medical. No, the longer we sit here, the more it starts to seep in. It's just funny got, to watch I got it. chemical enhancement excuses today. No, yeah, you do. <laughs> you do, yeah, and, and, it, and it shows. Yeah, What's coming up next, man? More record making, more stuff. producing. I'm doing Lots some unconventional records you wouldn't expect me to do. Oh, cool. The next one. Different genres of music, is that what it is? Or? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Like what kind of genres? Kind of jazzy. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. Is that's a that's a love of yours, or just a project seemed interesting? The project that came out, I thought it'd be cool. Mm. Do something different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got to do stuff different to just get yeah. the edge, right? Yeah, because you you got to. I just finished yeah. making the German project, German rap. Mm. It's really good. Mm. They had really good samples, really good beats. Mm -hmm. 
don't know what the fuck they were talking about. But, you know, what the hell. The well, German <laughs> language <laughs> seems like it'd be a good language to <laughs> rap. <laughs> it's an interesting <laughs> way to rap. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's abrasive. Unbelievable. The, the technology that changes so often, there's a balance between utilizing it and having it utilize you, right? You have to make sure it's a tool of yours and you don't become a tool of it. Well, you use the essers, right? Sometimes. A lot, yeah. Yeah, it's like, a, they don't answer. have a Kai right? Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like the German is like, it's interesting. It's, yeah. It took a different challenge to... Yeah. To DS the in vocals. some countries, you can't God. DS because it changes the, 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 the meaning of the word. That's kind of weird, too, I think, in some of the Asian countries and languages. Uh, I usually use two DSers. Yeah. One early, one late. You want another hit before we go? I think I'm good. You sure? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you are good. He's got a tat and everything. You, you want it <laughs> yourself. You, you've got a tat by pen and so on yeah. so forth. Any other technical questions? Oh, another <laughs> one? <laughs> I got a million of them. You, you had a few you didn't ask. Uh, you want another one? Oh, about mastering. No. Yeah, we went into that. How about this one? Uh, what do you use for saturation effects? Um, do you use saturation a lot? Yeah, actually, there's a thing in Ableton called Saturator. That's what we use for saturation. Are you programming a lot in Ableton? Yeah. Ableton, FL, Pro Tools. No in that order, mostly Ableton? Depends. Equal. Oh, okay. Pro Tools just for mixing, mm -hmm. recording vocals. Mm -hmm. And Ableton FL Studio. As soon as the other ones get playlists, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Right, yeah, exactly. I'm out of questions. That's it. Let, let the high create one for you. Okay. On some of the songs that you do where I hear, like, <laughs> drops, <laughs> I can go forever. <laughs> uh, when you get a song, and so, so there's a track that plays start to finish, mm -hmm. uh, or say all the tracks play mostly start to finish, do you take the uh, responsibility of kind of making them work, like do drops, like drop the yeah, drums out? something to lead into the chorus, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. And do you no, a lot, most people have their stuff the way they want it these days when, when they bring it to you to mix. Well, well, producing it's that's what we hear all the time. You're really kind of taking a handoff. It's already going one direction, yeah. and then you take it and... Do another yes. direction, as opposed to you try to leave it where they had it and take it further. Take it to the take it to the next instead level. of starting over. You know. Mm -hmm. Okay, another technical question. When you when a lot of times when you have a delay, you, you use a different delay for each side. Did you steal that from me? Be honest. Yeah, two PC and forty two. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> yeah. I knew it. Got all your technical things in. Yeah, Everybody yeah. feeling I'm, I'm good? Ready. I'm ready. Yeah. You know we love you, man. You always got a home yeah. here. Congrats on having an incredible, incredible run. Uh, it's nowhere over. Oh, yeah. uh, so uh, one of the most gifted ever. You take it home, Dave. Wow, I wasn't thinking about that. Um, you know, I'm going to go back to what Mike said about the value of education and actually um, taking lessons once in a while. It doesn't have to be classical lessons. I mean, you can... You can, there's various forms of teaching inside the, the audio profession that you can go check out. But I also think it's, it's helpful, it's not completely necessary to maybe get some music lessons and some theory under your belt. Or just go uh, on YouTube. Yeah, just go on YouTube. In my day, I used to go to the Encyclopedia Britannica. And yeah, it's like now YouTube yeah. is your source. It's like, yeah. that's why I've been learning new jazz skills at 53. You know? No shit. Yeah, I'm trying to learn new shit. That's cool as heck. You heard it from the man himself. Check it out. It's a technique that'll uh, help you advance quicker and possibly add to your income later on. And by the way, thanks for coming by. We'll see you next week. Peace. <laughs>